Today is the one year anniversary of Sky Scholar. We begin our new year by presenting the talk which I gave at the April 2018 meeting of the APS in Columbus, Ohio. The link to the abstract is listed below. Remember to like, subscribe and share. Thank you for all your comments and for your support this past year. Uh, so of course the talk is about does a star, uh, if you have a, a gaseous plasma, can it spontaneously collapse on itself and make a star just from gravitational forces? And my talk is arguing that this is clearly a violation of the laws of thermodynamics. So if you start with the zeroth law, uh, most people when you learn the zeroth law you just think in terms of if A and B are in equilibrium and B and C are in equilibrium then A and C are, must be in equilibrium. But the law also implies that temperature is an intensive property. So the temperature of an object cannot depend on extensive properties which in combination cannot yield an intensive property. So just a simple review of some elementary uh, ideas here in thermodynamics. We have intensive properties like temperature, pressure, density, concentration, specific volume, and color. And when we have extensive properties like mass, energy, enthalpy, entropy, volume, and heat capacities. And then of course there's some properties that are neither intensive nor extensive like the radius of a sphere or the area of a sphere. So the concept, so Landsberg uh, actually was, uh, he wrote this book on uh, thermodynamics in 1961 and at that time he actually wrote that the concept of intensive and extensive properties is so important that it should be actually named the fourth law of thermodynamics because it serves for us as an important guide. And the rule is, is that if one side of an equation is extensive or intensive, then so must be the other side. So you can just see this from the ideal gas law. This is a very simple to see here. So if you look at the ideal gas law, while well pressure is uh, intensive and volume is extensive, N is extensive, R is a constant, and T is intensive, R is extensive, N is extensive. So you can just rearrange for P, and then you can express N as mass divided by molar mass, and then you can then get P in terms of mass, the gas constant, temperature, the molar mass, and the volume. And since density is mass over volume, density is intensive, so you, you get two extensive terms together that create an intensive term. And uh, you can have the specific gas constant, which is just equal to uh, the, the universal gas constant divided by the molar mass. So now you have pressure, which is intensive, on the left density which is intensive on the right and temperature which is intensive. So this is correct. You see that in this equation on the left you have something that's intensive and on the right you have something that's intensive as well. So this follows the laws of thermodynamics. So now you look at the equation for the temperature of a star. This is for a homogeneous sphere and this equation was first proposed by Eddington and then it was followed by Jeans and Chandrasekhar. Um, and you can easily find this uh, in their textbooks. And so this is uh, for a homogeneous mass. The temperature for a self-gravitating mass is equal to the universal constant of gravitation, the, the overall mass, the mass of the proton, divided by 5 times Boltzmann's constant times the radius. So the problem is here is that temperature, of course, is intensive. But if you look on the right, uh, the mass of the proton is intensive. It's a constant, I mean, and the, the Boltzmann's constant is a constant, and so is G, so we don't worry about them. So now we have mass, which is extensive, divided by the radius, which is neither intensive nor extensive. So in order to make temperature intensive here, you'd have to divide mass by volume. But since you're not doing it, 
you're not getting temperature as an intensive property. So the problem is, is that for these equations for the stars, uh, when you use gravitational collapse, you don't get temperature as an intensive property. So this is a violation of thermodynamics. So temperature is intensive. However, mass, as I said, is extensive, and R is not extensive. It's volume that is an extensive property for a homogeneous sphere. So as a result, temperature is not an intensive property in this expression, as mass over radius is not intensive. So this constitutes a violation of elementary thermodynamic principles. So, so Eddington's expression for the temperature of a homogeneous star states that as the radius of the star decreases, its temperature must increase. And that actually comes from Lane's law. Lane proposed this in 1870. When Lane, learnt, when Lane wrote the paper, he didn't realize actually that, uh, that this is the conclusion that he had come to. Uh, it was someone else later on called it Lane's law because you could extract it from Lane's paper. So as the star's radius decreases, its temperature goes up. That's, that's Lane's law. Uh, so during the gravitational collapse of a gaseous mass to make a star, this implies that the system must do work upon itself and thereby increase its own temperature. So this is another problem. This is a clear violation of the first law of thermodynamics. So you have a system that's becoming more ordered. It's doing work on itself, raising its own temperature, and that's a violation of the first law. So this expression also leads to the negative heat capacity of a star, and that's also a clear sign of error. So uh, gases cannot self-compress. They must expand to fill the void. That's what we see in the laboratory. So the only way to form a star without violating the laws of thermodynamics is to allow for condensation reactions and condensed matter, as I highlighted in this paper. So what I'm saying is that the stars cannot be made from gaseous plasma. If you do that, if you, if you think that a star is just made from the self-compression of a gas, you're going to be in violation of the laws of thermodynamics. Actually, all the laws, the first, second, and third law, because you don't have an engine in which to do the compression, so you're in violation of the second law. You, you also don't have a means of emission if you have an ideal gas. So all laws of thermodynamics are being broken. Whereas if you say, okay, now the stars are actually condensed matter, and this is what I've advocated, that the sun is actually made of metallic hydrogen, and you can see this, there's many proofs of this, and uh, in this paper I outlined 40 proofs that the sun must be condensed matter. So if you talk to an astronomer, he says that the sun doesn't have a, th a true surface. This is just an opacity effect uh, in the optical. But if, if you look at all frequencies, from very low frequencies in helioseismology, all the way up to gamma rays, there's no question that the sun has a real surface. And uh, you, uh, if you read this paper, I also have a YouTube channel. You can go to it. It's called Sky Scholar, and you will actually be able to see uh, proves that the sun does indeed have a real surface and it has a real lattice. So I'm saying that the stars are condensed matter and that means that they cannot spontaneously compress into highly compressed objects. Thank you very much for your time. The first question was, what is the role of potential energy? Well, I'm saying that it has no effect, right? If you, if, if you look at the kinetic theory of gases, the energy that's involved in that gas is already included in the kinetic theory. So if you're adding gravitational potential energy, you're adding something else. So let's say you use the virial equation, for instance, to look at a planet going around the sun. Well, that works because there you're not saying that the kinetic energy is going to contribute to the temperature, right? So you, you can balance the kinetic energy and the potential energy, and there's not a problem. But what happens with a star is that you use the virial theorem, this is how these expressions were derived. And now you say that that kinetic energy is now associated with temperature. And this is where the violation of thermodynamics comes in. Okay? Because, you, because now you're, you're linking gravi gravitation with it as well. And so that, that as soon as you do that, then you make temperature non-intensive. So what, what astronomy has done is make all the stars non-intensive. And you cannot make the temperatures of a star non-intensive. So I think it is a serious problem. The second question was really a comment, not a question. It went as follows. Because of the virial theorem and because of the negative gravitational potential energy, 
There is really no problem with negative specific heats for gravitating systems. And as to whether gravitational collapse is possible or not, we can conceive often in numerical simulations that you really don't have to have any matter present at all. You can just have vacuum, just space and time themselves, no matter at all, and that would collapse into a black hole, and since in vacuum the only equations that go in are the Einstein equations, and since in vacuum you don't need to put any equation of state, you don't need to put in any thermodynamics. Right, and my point is that maybe physics needs to rethink some of these ideas because what is happening here with these ideas of making a black hole from nothing or collapsing stars where you're in clear violation of thermodynamics, I mean, I think that there are some real problems in physics. We either honor the laws of thermodynamics or we say, hey, pass everybody on the test. Why am I taking the exam? So I, I'm trying to tell people that the laws of thermodynamics exist and they must be honored. So right now what is happening in physics is that people think that they can create any object from mathematics and say, yeah, this object works. And what I'm trying to say is that these objects do not work. So thermodynamics is telling you these things are in violation of the laws of thermodynamics. And this is an important observation. So thank you very much.